Hi folks, Steve from Azimuth Images here. A little update, uh, went out at the weekend, saw some standing stones in North Wales and uh, ideal photo subject, ideal lens ball subject. So I thought I'd show you how I create the, the hover in the middle of the air lens ball effect. If you put it on something solid, the, the, the beach or the grass or you know, something else, it's dead easy, it just stays there, um, assuming the ground's flat. Uh, but if you want to do the, the mid-air hover, uh, as you can see on the screen now, that's my finished image, uh, you've got to find some way of defying gravity. And, uh, of course, you can't. So what I've done is to show you how I achieve this. I've got a still photo that I took on my phone, so the quality isn't great, as to the setup I was using. And the setup I was using involved a second tripod. Uh, the wide-angle lens set to about 12mm uh, or so, and as you can see from that photo, I'm very, very close with the camera to the lens ball. So that's, uh, if I zoom out of this, make my normal size, that's the start image that I had. Uh, the lens ball is sharp, the image within it is sharp. I appreciate the shadow is not perfect. The problem is that uh, during the process of taking this and the shots I needed for, for what I'm doing here, the sun moved. And uh, I, I tried, but I just couldn't stop it, and it, it insisted on moving. So the bottom of the screen there, you've got my old tripod, uh, which I'm really, really pleased I kept. And all I've done is I've inverted the center column and balanced the lens ball on the, uh, the rubber base of that. And it, it fits absolutely wonderfully. And of course, being the tripod, I can adjust it and make sure the lens ball doesn't fall off. So I'm really very pleased with that. It just doesn't look terribly attractive though, does it? So what you then do is you take a second shot uh, having done nothing more than physically just take the lens ball and tripod out the way. And you can see that looks amazingly attractive. So the trick now, of course, is to get the lens ball from the other shot into this shot. Uh, something a bit like that. And you could settle for that. I think that's not too bad. There's many people that would really, really like that for a look where the lens ball is fantastically sharp and the background is, is nicely blurred didn't do it for me. Uh, I really wanted to have um, the as well. And I achieved that ultimately by playing with another image. So uh, it's not perfectly aligned, I, I appreciate that. That's what happens when you mess about doing how-to videos instead of just getting on with what you're doing. So the question we really need to know, or you need to know, is how do I go about getting the lens ball from here uh, to where I want it to be. Indeed, how did I get the lens ball from over here to where it is now? It's Photoshop. There's loads of ways of doing this, but here's what I did. Uh, bear in mind, I'm using a Windows-based uh, machine, so I'm not on... ...if you need to do command up. So I'm going to go Control plus a couple of times, and what I'm doing here is giving myself the ability to draw uh, a square box around the lens ball. It's a ball, it's spherical. And that's to my advantage. So I'm just going to grab some grid lines here by dragging from the top down. I'm going just inside where there's detail. Uh, if I move my pointer over there, hopefully you can just about see. I've just come inside to where there's detail. I'll try and get an arrow on that uh, when, I, when I do the edit. Back down here then, we'll drag another one down uh, to a similar position where I'm just kind of getting just the right amount in. My, my judgment there. And then from the left, I'll drag a guide in from the right. And again, I'll just bring it in slightly so I lose a little bit of that soft edge because it's not overly important. I grab another guide and put that over to the right. Um, okay, so what I have now is a box that's very nearly square. It'll be a few pixels out. And I now need to make a selection. One thing you need to do if you're going to do this trick is to remember to go down and unlock it. So just click on it once or unlock whichever trick you want to do, just unlock it, or it doesn't work, as I found out. Hence, this is take two. So up to the circular tool, so I'm using the elliptical mask tool. And because I've drawn this box, I can now go up to the very top left-hand corner, left-click and hold, down to the bottom right-hand corner. And when I get that as close as I reasonably can, I'll let go. Now, I've already set up here on the uh, select settings um, in uh, modify. I've already set the border and smooth 
and feather all down to one. I want this to be quite a sharp extraction. So I'm sure you can just go into these and adjust where you want to be. So I'll just show you that I've gone into feather. Uh, tell I've got that as two pixels. I'll settle for two pixels. Okay. I really don't want a soft edge on this. I want the lens ball to be sharp. I want it to be sharp in the background. Hence, I've gone for that, that quite tight thing. Get in mind, we've got a 6,000 pixel wide image here. So that really is quite a tight crop. Uh, the next thing I do is I've got my selection. Um, and all I'm going to do is move over to my move tool. Uh, onto the, the area there, I've got a little scissors icon. If I put it down the screen, you'll see a little scissors icon. And I'm going to left click, hold, and drag it across to where I want it to be. So where I want it to be is in that, that fourth image across there where everything is sharp. So left click, drag, drag my lens ball up and out of the way. If you hover there for just a second, it will drop into the new image. As I move down into the new image, if I then hold shift with my extremely long fingers and let go of the mouse key first, that centers the image, which looks quite good, except it's in entirely the wrong place. However, you will notice on the right hand side of the screen down here, it's a new layer. And I've still got the move tool selected. So all I need to do now is um, move it. So back onto the crosshairs there, drag it down to where I think it looks good. And generally speaking, these tend to look good if you get the horizons lined up, which is a great reason for shooting on the tripod. Um, I do appreciate, as I say, the, the shadow's not perfect. Uh, you know, things happen as they say. So if I let go of that there, I'm quite happy with that. And then all I need to do is lay a merge it. Uh, and that would be the end result. That would, that would do the job. What I did feel, however, was that uh, the sky could do a little more drama. So I'm not going to go through my messing about with levels. That's, that's your choice how you want the levels to be. Uh, but having achieved what you see there on screen now, obviously flatten it and save it and everything else, uh, I then decided to up, up the sky a little uh, and you can see uh, I've put a bit more depth into the sky. Remember if you do that and you put depth into the sky, you need to put some depth into the lens ball as well. Otherwise the sky doesn't match and it's, it's pretty obvious. So what I've achieved now is an image I really quite like. Um, I'll put it on the screen, full screen for you now. And that's what I did. So the sun has the kind of halo effect behind the, the standing stone. Um, we've got the shadow, granted not quite perfect. And just to the, uh, the left there, you'll be able to see uh, the second standing stone. And although I did take images of both, uh, and you know, lens ball here and there and everything else, for the purpose of this demonstration, uh, that's, that's all I need to do. And then obviously, sort of, you know, save it and keyword it and all the other things. And then of course, what you do is you find a fabulous print on demand website like lens to printcouk and you submit it. And having done that, hopefully the world at large loves it and places an order and uh, it's a happy day situation. So that's how it worked for me. There's loads of different ways of doing this. I do appreciate there's people saying, well, you could have done this and you might have done that and I, you know, the shadow, I, I don't mind. That's entirely your thing. Every photograph is a good photograph if you liked it. And if somebody else likes it, that's a bonus.